Hey class, this is Roy covering our first video lecture in chapter one for learning objective number one called progressive, proportional, and regressive tax structures. So three different tax structures you have to know about in this chapter. But throughout the whole semester, throughout our whole course, what we're learning is a progressive or applying a progressive tax structure. In all three different tax structures, we're going to be using a formula. We're going to be taking a tax base, and here in our course, that tax base is called taxable income. This is a specific dollar amount on the tax form that you're going to be filing with the government, a specific line amount. And you're going to be multiplying this by a tax rate. The tax rate is typically stated as a percentage or multiple percentage um, uh, amounts. And you, when you multiply out the tax base by the rate, what you're going to get is the tax. So here is the taxable income for the whole year, all the money you made for the whole year. You multiply it by a percentage, and here is the tax for the whole year. Okay, so let's take a look at the progressive tax structure. Here, when we look at our taxable income or tax base, if it's increasing, if the amount is getting bigger and bigger, what's going to happen to the tax rate, that percentage, it's also going to get bigger. Sometimes we call this a graduated tax structure because the more money you make, the bigger that percentage is going to grow. But also the opposite is true. If you make less money, your taxable income goes down, then the rate will go down, that percentage will go down. So the thinking here is if you make lots of money, you should be able to afford to pay a higher tax rate. Or if you're poor, like me, then the government will give you a break by charging you a smaller a percentage. Again, this is what we're going to be studying this structure in our class because we're studying income taxes. So in the case of a proportional tax structure, here's your tax base and if the tax base is increasing, the tax rate doesn't change. It remains the same. So likewise if the tax base goes down, your tax rate, that percentage stays the same. And here it says an example of that would be the sales taxes you have to pay. So if you make a big purchase, you pay a same rate as a small purchase. Okay, That rate doesn't change. So now for regressive, which is just the opposite of the progressive we first saw, if the tax base is increasing, getting bigger, the tax rate, that percentage, is going to go down. Does that make sense? Opposite is also true. If you make less money, technically the tax rate, that percentage, will increase. And here they say an example of that is our Social Security tax system, which we really don't focus on in our class. If you want to learn more about the Social Security tax system, you should be taking our class called Accounting 132, um, Payroll Accounting and Hawaii General Excise Tax. So here is a more detailed example of our progressive tax structure. So if you take a look at the second to the last page in our textbook, what you'll see is four sets of tax rate schedules, of which on this slide you see only two of them. One made for a single filing status, and another made for married filing joint and qualifying widow filing status. And we'll talk more about filing statuses in our next chapter, chapter 2. So let's say that we have a taxpayer with a tax base or taxable income of $50,000. So once you ca calculate the taxpayer's taxable income for the year, you would find their filing status. So let's say they're single, unmarried, and you would look up that taxable income within these two columns here. So it says here the first uh, $8,700 of taxable income is going to be taxed at 10%. But 
But once you go over 8,700, 8, the next dollar looks like a range of 20 something thousand. 20 something? Yeah, okay. 20 something thousand is taxed at a higher rate of 15%. And if you go over 35,350 of taxable income, the excess is taxed at 25%. These percentages here are called are called marginal rates and we'll talk more about mar mar marginal rates in another uh, video okay but once you hit a certain percentage that doesn't mean all your taxable income is taxed at that high rate in the case of our 50,000 it would fall right between these two amounts 50,000 is over 35,350 but not over 85,650 Okay, so the 50,000 would be using this roll right here. And it says your tax is going to be 4,867.50. Really this amount right here is the tax of 10% uh, on this 8,700 and 15% of this middle range. If you add up the two taxes for these two first brackets or layers of tax, that would be this 4,867.50. So now we we'll only need to calculate out the excess of 50,000 over uh, 35,350. What is that? About 15, 14,000 times 25% plus this 4,867.50, and that would be the total tax on this 50,000. So again, this 50,000, even though you're using this line, is not all tax at 25% you still get the benefit of the first layer and the second layer tax at lower rates. So if you're in the highest bracket here, 35%, not everything is taxed at 35%, you get the benefit of the previous one, two, three, four, five layers taxed at lower rates. And here would be the tax, 112,683.50. I wish I could afford to pay that, but that would be making this amount here of taxable income and anything excess of this tax at 35%. Now in the case of a married couple filing in jointly, you can see that the bracket ranges here, the spread is double of the single, here double of the single. And it gets kind of tighter here where it then eventually is the same um, tax at 35%. Okay, so this is our progressive tax structure. The more you make, the bigger the tax rate here. To better illustrate that progressive rate we just saw, sometimes called graduated rate, here it shows for a single filing status, the first 8750 8, is taxed at 10%. So what you get to do is keep 90% of that 8750 but once you go over and earn more than that, the next dollar over 8,700 is taxed at 15%, all the way up to a total of 35,350. So this second layer here of 26,650, the difference between these two amounts, is taxed at 15%, or another $3,998. And here is $870 on the first layer or a total of uh, uh, $4,868 of tax if you earn this amount here. And you get to keep the balance. Notice your share is shrinking and shrinking each time you move up and the government's take is getting bigger. Again, all the way up to uh, a rate of 35%. Uh, There's like six, five or six different brackets or layers. Okay, so again, this is called progressive. The thinking is that the more income you earn, the higher rate you should be paying. Yeah, higher rate you should be paying. But you still get the benefit of these lower brackets down here. Here's an example of a proportional tax structure using the Hawaii, not sales tax, but some people mis uh, use the wrong term sales tax. In Hawaii, what you're paying is really a general excise tax. So let's say you, you're a business selling to another business. We call that wholesaling. And if you sell $1 worth of merchandise to that business, 
you have to pay a half a percent or in decimal point zero zero five but if you sell a million dollars worth of merchandise you still pay that half a percent I think it's like five thousand dollars yeah five thousand yeah five thousand dollars versus a half a cent on one dollar let's say that you are a business and sell to a consumer people like you and me we call that retailing so if the business sells a dollar to a consumer they pay four cents in taxes if you pay a million dollar pay um, sell a million dollars of merchandise to a customer you would pay something like uh, forty thousand four percent the rate stays the same no matter how much you sell here of course if you sell to a different customer the rate will change but that's still using the same rate no matter how much you sell within that range for that type of customer okay so that's an example of proportional the rate doesn't change for this type of sales or activity the rate doesn't change no matter how much you sell to this type of uh, customers example of regressive that our textbook talked about is the social security tax which is really part of something called the federal insurance contribution act tax that has two different parts one called social security or more formally known as old age disability survivor insurance another part is called medicare sometimes it's called hospital insurance and they have these two different rates so the total is this 5.65%. Uh, Some people pay more Social Security taxes than income taxes. Here, they're going to withhold this from your paycheck up to your earnings of $110,100. But once you exceed earning this from your employer, any excess, this would be zero. And then, uh, this would be still this unlimited 1.45 percent so total would be 1.5 percent tax FICA tax on anything earned over this so everything earned up to this tax at this amount but once you go over this amount it's taxed at this lower rate this total lower rate now if you have your own business and you're not an employee working for someone else but you work for yourself your profits from your business is going to be taxed double that of almost double more than double for the um, your business income but only up to 110,100 because once you go over that this tax stops the social security tax this Medicare tax will continue so the total tax in excess of 110,100 is 2.9 percent versus 13.3 on this amount here again notice it goes down once you exceed this yeah once you exceed this so again we call that regressive tax structure so this table right here is on the last page in our textbook and again something you would cover in another class it's discussed more in detail in chapter 10 but we're not covering chapter 10 in our classes at least our tax income tax classes so here's an example of all three types of tax structure progressive proportional and regressive but not really a tax but here I'm using maybe more of an analogy of the water rates charged by the Board of Water Supply so let's say that you live in a multifamily residential unit either an apartment or a condominium and let's say that you um, use lots of water here 30,000 gallons for the month here they could charge by units of a thousand gallons so for the first 9,000 gallons you use here each thousand or nine you're gonna be charged three dollars and six cents but once you go over 9,000 gallons up to let's say another looks like the difference here is 13,000 gallons each of those are taxed at three dollars and sixty eight cents notice how it increased this is progressive so once you go over a total of twenty two in my case here I need another eight it's going to be charged at a higher rate of five dollars forty nine cents so it looks like maybe they're trying to 
motivate you to use less water by charging you more and more as you increase the amount of usage for the month. Or let's say that you're a non-residential user, so that's really a business here. And it says all the usage, all 30,000 gallons, is, ta is charged 343. It's like somewhere around here, yeah? No matter how much you use. Now in the case of agriculture, the first 13,000 is charged at 306, but once you exceed 13, in my case I need another 17,000, here the rate went down. Now why would they do that? Why would they charge less by using more? Well, in the case of agriculture, that's an important business sector in our economy and they want to promote that. And one way to promote agriculture is to maybe maybe not subsidize but give them a break by charging them less by trying to expand their operations. This is an example of a regressive tax structure. And here everything is taxed or charged at the same rate that's proportional. Here when you start using more and more and charging at a higher rate, that's progressive. Okay, so that's an example of all three tax or rate structures being applied to our board of water supply. This is the end of our first video for chapter one. Go ahead and take a look at the next video regarding objective number two.